Mahasangi Sangi from Daft Punk. Hi. Hello, Pete. Hello. <laughs> it's been a while. I was I was working this out since we probably lasted an interview. It was probably eight or nine years ago. At least. It yeah. might have been even 10, Maybe 10 or 10 11 years, years yeah. ago, yes. So, Random Access Memory is your first studio album since since Human After All back in 2005. Why so long? I mean, we, we could consider that Random Access Memories is our first studio album ever, in some sense, you know, just yeah. because it's the first time we actually went into a studio to record a record. But the last um, eight years uh, were filled with um, uh, different experiences um, from going on tour for almost a uh, year and a half or two years in 2006 and 2007, and then uh, uh, working on, on Tron in 2009, part of 2010. But um, mostly we, we, we were interested in, in taking the time to reinvent ourselves and see where we could um, go next and we were really experimenting all these years in the, in the studio it was not like we started really even though we started making the music on this record somehow uh, recording some demos in 2008 i think for a very long time we just wanted to um, e experiment and and see what we could do that we hadn't done before and what was exciting and 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 usually it takes time you know the the, the gap between uh, our first and second album was uh, four years between the second and the third was an, another three or four years as well so it's it it was a little bit longer this time, but um, but the project at the same time was uh, more ambitious and, and, and doing a certain things that we hadn't done before and that took, that took longer time to design. I've heard the album, just as a kind of fan of yours and knowing you for so long, the, the first thought I had sitting listening to it, it was giving me goosebumps, was that you, it was almost like you got to make the record you always wanted to make maybe, you know, born in the 70s, it, it's like a homage to, that period of time of your childhood um, to just talk us through the process, the thought process of, you know, how you went about making this record and why you made it in the way you made it. Well, it's true that we've, we've always loved and, and, and cherished a certain craft and a certain kind of records that uh, influenced us from the time we, we started making music. And if you listen to around the world, for example, uh, we've always loved a, uh, uh, Chic, um, and Nile Rodgers um, and Bernard Edwards music, and but we, in some sense, um, uh, this track already on, on homework was a, a certain homage um, and of of, of doing uh, music that we uh, really were doing in a home studio, and that's what uh, you know we come from a house music background, and that's what Chicago house music was. You know, Chicago house kind of was born after the the destruction or the, the collapse of disco and it was this way of, of, of you know of these producers or these young producers in, the, in their in their basement uh, with a drum machine and, and a synth trying to make something that would look like a record that might not be a record but in some sense we're really were uh, you know emerged from that tradition and uh, of uh, working in a home studio and, and pretending to do to do record and 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 so it really felt that this album uh, was the same music uh, that we've always done and and you're right to say it's maybe the record we always wanted to do because it felt like we're doing the same thing but this time we're doing it for real you know there was a, a golden age of um, a, a music making where where um, albums were these. Um, ambitious projects and, and, and in a certain way, a certain kind of teamwork with a, a certain level of craftsmanship from the musicians to uh, the, re the, the engineers to the studios and, 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 and that were um, uh, creating this kind of magic. And um, after the Tron uh, record where we were able to experience this teamwork with a, uh, an orchestra, which was extremely exciting for us to go go out of our home studio and just uh, having worked just the two of us for so many years and being able to open up with other musicians we felt wow we're really excited to to maybe we could do our music like that for this record that's that's you know the tron record somehow gave us the key of of a direction that we could take uh, which was you know, focusing on, uh, as you said, like doing the same music, but replacing to a certain extent the machines with the people. And really also, you know, we've always loved sampling and, and, and we're like really wondering what was the magic in those samples? What was the magic in those little bits of, 
of life and of, of snippets of, of audio recordings that had so much uh, sparkle somehow. Soul as well. Soul yeah. and and we and because it's still like an F chord or a C chord, it's, it's sometimes it's pretty simple, but but there's so much life in it that we felt like that would be a very interesting um, experiment to see if we can make a record using of uh, recreating a certain set of circumstances to maybe feel like the 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 golden age of of these records is not over to to bring it back you've almost you know? created a new record for other people to sample it somehow all started with the drums and looking at wow you know it was a f somehow of a fantasy of ours to say we'd love to do a, a club track or dance music track with the real drummer and like as, the old disco records. Like the old disco records, all are like some disco, you know, if you take um Kiss by Prince, you know, it's not really disco, yeah. but it's just a track that you that has this kind of timeless cool. feel and it felt like wow, the drums might be an interesting angle. So by transforming some of our demos uh, that we had with um, uh, session players and, and live drummers and, and rhythm sections and then really um and trying to create a certain a sonic universe from that record totally on a blank canvas uh, where we're not using any existing sounds that have been used in other recordings seems to be an interesting challenge how um let's just talk about a few of the collaborators um pharrell williams you you produced hypnotize you didn't you we produced hypnotize Was you uh, um we've always you know been big fans of him as a, a, a producer a writer and composer and a, and a performer and um and here um, he totally went on board the idea of, you know, went for the ride of saying, you know, the, the golden age of, of these classic records is not over. And he, he really nailed it in a, in, a, in a fantastic way for us as being like this perfect match of, of being this performer in, this, in, a, in a certain tradition, but, but really in, into the future. With with get lucky, what came first? You had that you had the track with Niall, and then he came on. on yeah, the end, actually, yeah. with get lucky, we had the track. Um, even without Niall, for a very long time, there was just like this this um, you know somehow disco groove that we have, had made with um, Omar Hakim on the drums and uh, Nathan East on on the bass, and then we added um, Niall. Uh, where songs were built over you know sometimes um, even in terms of recordings over two and a half years traveling all over the world in different studios and each time adding a certain layer yeah. you know that was what was fun for get lucky we once we had nile and now happened in the very same organic way it, it jammed on, on the tracks and added these amazing chord inversions and things like that with his guitar then we really went back with the nathan east which is the bass player and we we had him redo the the bass line uh, so, so that it would fit with Nile and almost became like this kind of funk competition, yeah. you know, where you, <laughs> yeah. you had this idea of really like musicians um, feeding Which each, is what they each did other, back in the day, which Absolutely, is what they did yeah. back in the day. And, and so it's true that, you know, we felt like really being able to put the, these this environment for this magic to happen. He says he can't remember the recording session. He, he cannot, he cannot. <laughs> what <yeah>. happened? <laughs> well, it was jet lag. He gave him something to drink or something. <laughs> no, he cannot. No, it's funny. He, had, yeah. he, brought his, he brought his drinks. He brought his drinks. Yeah, his liquor. He, has yeah, a liquor he had a liquor that yeah. he brought, yeah, which is the, which is the, liquor, the liquor he... He's on brand. <laughs> He's on brand, yeah. It's, but it's a mesmerizing um, lyric and performance. I'm, I'm not a great lyric person. I ran out of the listening room. I, I wrote them down, actually. It was just it's such a simple refrain, but yes. such a meaningful. I think that's when you arrive, if he doesn't remember and the jet lag and everything, I think there was some, really some magic that happened, you know? And so he listened to the track, we sat down and he got really fast into the vibe and wanted to, to sing uh, like really, Really spontaneously, and and everything came out in like a couple. So of he hours. didn't have those no. lyrics worked no, out. No, 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 everything. That's why he doesn't remember because it was like so spontaneous and instant. It was just a, a fast sparkle of magic, and I think he channeled like some of the best uh, soul and R and B that he's been listening to, like us, like big fans of Marvin Gaye or Stevie Wonder. Even his voice is not sounding... Curtis same. Mayfield as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. His voice is sounding really different to me. And uh, yeah, it was like uh, meant to be, I guess. Let's qu talk quickly about Giorgio Moroder, an amazing track, a spoken word track. It takes me back to kind of the old disco era where you'd have a, a symphony on one side of an album. It was that was that kind of the uh, the 
the target that you the, wanted to get with that? The idea was to really have an ability to make a track about a musician's life. And, and you know, Giorgio's career is amazing. It starts in the Italian Alps, you know, as, as this uh, uh, kid that then becomes uh, a musician doing like easy listening uh, music playing in hotel lounges in the early 60s. Then he moves to Germany and, and has this career in German pop music. Then he starts uh, a disco with um, Donna Summer and, and somehow a, a techno as well with uh, Midnight Express and moves to uh, America and have all this, has all this um, um, amazing um, career in, in, in film scoring. So it really shows that there are no rules and that, you know, it was an, an innovator that really broke all the rules. And that's what this song is too. It's about, you know, it's about music in general too, which is Giorgio's life is a metaphor for music and for f the freedom of music. It feels like you want to promote his legend. It was almost like you wanted to <laughs> tell the world about I don't think he needs us to promote <laughs> his legend somehow, you know. Well, maybe like to it, a new generation. Possibly. The ability to work with Giorgio, which is now 72 years old, and or Paul Williams, and feeling those people have, have really shaped us and influenced us uh, and shaped us and inspired us as, as human beings, you know, and discovering th their music and their art when we were kids. And even Niall uh, pointed out that, that almost his interaction to disco was almost through uh, Donna Summer, Love to Love You Baby, you know, that, that kind of like shaped also chic in some sense, you know. And just tell us about the, uh, the Julian Casablanca's track. Uh, the Instant Crush track is a, is a song we did with uh, uh, Julian uh, from The Strokes. Um, I mean, The Strokes is probably our favorite rock band. Uh, and um, we were thrilled and excited to be able to collaborate with him and, and, to, and to do something different, you know, to do something that we hadn't done before, to do something that he hadn't done before, which is at the, at the junction a little bit of... Uh, the music we like, you know. The, the great thing with all these collaborators is to realize how inspiring uh, their music was to us and discover also that um, our music uh, was an inspiration for, for them too, you know. You've got some of the old school involved in the album, DJ Falcon and, and Todd Edwards. Yes. How, your roots still, a lot, a lot of people ask me to ask you this, your roots in terms of your love for, for where the whole thing started, is it, does that, you still got a strong passion for... Yes, again, underground I, I, house music. I really feel that the variety of, of, of the love of music and the process that we have in this album, uh, Random Access Memories, is really what the spirit of house music is. You know, you could play, um, you know, a Led Zeppelin track and after a, a Marshall Jefferson track, and it it has it had this freedom, this absence of uh, a formatted structure, you know, and the great thing with, with uh, Todd Edwards and, and, and DJ Falcon is that these are producers that we really appreciate and they, they turn out to be some of our best friends as well. Yeah, Todd know. tells a great story on the collaborative video, which I advise everyone to go and see, but he'd never been to LA before, which is quite astounding. I think, no, no, he, he'd been to LA, but you know, the, you, you haven't been to LA until you go to the hills somehow. Oh, you know, Holland as, Drive. You know, <laughs> as, as long as, if you stay only on the flat yeah. and you see just these kind of uh, suburbia, you know, it's not at the same time to see the coyotes and the rattlesnakes in the hills. Do you, you, is home now LA for you, or you still no? France? It's 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 Paris. So we live in Paris, but we our creative offices are in LA, and we we kind of commute, you know. So we're we're on a very regular basis in uh, in LA. This this record was was uh, mostly recorded in America, but uh, a lot of the production most most of the time also we spend in our in our studio in Paris. I tweeted actually to um, Radio One listeners or an Evolution listeners about um, you know what question to ask Daft Punk. And I reckon about ninety five percent of the people tweeted me back saying what's going to happen with the live show. Will there be a live show? Uh, there's no plans right now. We always do things one step at a time. We hardly tour and it's always really rare, but we want every step of what we're doing to be a special moment. And uh, let's just, you know, let's just uh, enjoy, the listening. enjoy the listening and then we'll, we'll, we'll see where it, where, where it takes us. Is there going to, I mean, you've always been, um, you know, your videos have, have always been amazing. You've, you've got your own film company when you're Daft Arts. You're based at Jim Henson's lot. Is there going to be videos for this? For this, or someone, I think, is it just the clip? No, it's it's. Uh, we we wanted to try to um, uh, experiment with formats, and 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 we're really excited 
by um, working with the, the you know 15 seconds and 30 seconds and 60 seconds uh, uh, kind of extended ad. It's like a, uh, yeah. Uh, right. So we felt that uh, there was maybe um, a more exciting way to express something today, you know, well, visually uh, in a one minute format than in three or four minutes. And that seems to actually be the case Works. to the reaction of how people, you know, I was told, you know, some people have been discovering the one minute ad and, and, and watching it like eight, nine, ten times in a row. Usually when you see a music video, you might just watch it once or twice, you know. So it's it's at the end of the day, um, you know, the music on that record was um, inspired by some classic albums that were predating the old music video era. And the last thing we wanted to do for this, this record, which is quite rich musically, is to stuff it with too many visuals and to still have rather than still leave a certain part of imagination let people dream, let yeah. people dream about it but have just the right amount of visuals yeah. for it to to unleash the, the, the their imagination to and the what, world and what about remixes will there be they didn't used to do remixes in the 70s <laughs> well they did these kind of mixes <laughs> well, they did their we'll, edits we'll see we were working on some some we were working on some mixes uh, uh, ourselves so, okay. uh, so, so it could uh, be Daft Punk mix of Daft Punk. Yes, there will probably be Daft Punk mixes of Daft Punk, which is something new. Usually, we 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 we've never mixed ourselves, but that's something we we feel we're interested of doing this time. Okay, thank you, thank you, Pete, thank you, Guy, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>